there folks, JD here, and today we've got this. This is the JJRC Blue Crab, and I'm quite excited about taking this little guy out. He's quite unique in the way that he folds, uh, quite unique in the way that he looks, and this blue is just electric, it really, really does stand out. So, as we saw in the unboxing, we can unlock the arms, and once we do, this is what she looks like when she's locked in place. See, that's really quite nice, I really like that. It's small, it's very light, mind you, extremely light. Unfortunately, today, it's very still. Look at this. It's so still. There's no breeze. So this is a perfect time to take this guy up. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to just lift him off. We're going to take him around a little bit. I'm going to get used to him because, obviously, he is controlled via a smartphone and not via a transmitter. Um, and then once we've taken him around a lap or two, then we're going to have a little look at this camera and see what this camera can do, whether or not it records well. If it doesn't record well, we'll get all that and then we'll put it in the video and we'll have a little look and see how it goes. Don't forget, if you want to know more information on this guy, you'll find him in the description. Uh, so with that, let's take him up. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is turn this on. Now, when we're on, we've got flashing blue lights on the front, flashing red lights on the back. Now, at this stage, we are able to now attach him to our um, to our smart device. So let's open up the settings. We should then have Wi-Fi, and then from there, we should be able to just choose this guy. So come on, JJRC, there you are, open network and bush we are connected we are ready to go so with this once this is done inside the manual is the um, is the app jjrc there's a little qr code uh, so once you've down once you've scanned that with your phone and then the app is downloaded this is pretty much what it'll look like we saw this last week with the uh, with the jjrc um the cygnus right connect we should be getting video relay oh there we go look at that so there's a little bit of video. Okay. Right. So what I'm going to do to start off with, we've got a load of these different uh, icons at the top. I'm going to start video recording. I'm going to... Um, speed is going to be at 30%. Uh, percent. That's going to be fine. Let's put on the analog sticks. Okay, one final thing to do. That is, put on the extra options here. Now, this is how we take off. There's an up button to take off, a down button to, to automatically land, and a stop button should there be any sort of emergencies. Uh, this little button here is for flight path, flight path, <laughs> by the look of it. Um, so for the second, let's take her up to the skies just by pushing this up button here. And with that, let's take her up. Okay, up we go. And the blue crab is up, active, and looking pretty good. Okay, so as this is altitude hold, and as this is not GPS, there is going to be some drift when you do stop and the altitude hold does take over. Okay, this is 30% speed. This is the slowest speed mode. It seems pretty good. It seems quite stable. It's very responsive, which is exactly what you want out of a little drone. Responds really well to all of my touches. See, as soon as you touch it, it just turns around turns around, increases altitude, decreases altitude without any issue. I'm really quite happy with that. Okay, let's try a couple of things. Let's turn around, the camera faces me. Hello. Right. Okay. That's all right, that's not too bad. Okay. Let's see how good that quality is when we come to edit the video. Okay, that's 30, 30%. Let's kick her up to 60%. This is speed 2. As you can see, when you kick her up to speed 2, the quadcopter then increases uh, its pitch forward, allowing you then to get a bit more speed out of those motors. Let's bring her down a little bit. As this is so light, if there was going to be a breeze that just turns up, I don't want this thing taking this. As for the camera position, in the unboxing I said that I was hoping the camera position would enable us to get some quite good footage. What I'm seeing from the relay here, again, is more tarmac. Obviously, if I don't, if I stop pitching her forward, then we get a little bit more. We get a little bit more of a scenic video shot, rather than just a, uh, a load of tarmac. But so far, 60% seems to be okay. Now... 
One thing, again, I'm very surprised at is these, these motors. They are so quiet. So absolutely quiet. Um, one thing I'm not liking about this is the fact that <laughs> he's climbing in altitude. I don't know if you can see this, but he is most definitely climbing. Let me bring him down again. And coming down, look how slow he is coming down. That's me right the way down, look. And he is very slow to decrease altitude. But if that's the worst thing that we've come across for the second, which it absolutely is, and it's pretty imperative to be able to land a drone. Okay, let's take her up again. Let's just take her forward, turning her around. I'm trying not, I'm trying to see whether this increase in altitude is me. I don't think it is, because I'm keeping my finger quite low on the button. But it seems to be hitting almost like a wall. Maybe it can't get further down than that. Okay, this is 60% speed. She seems to be doing quite well. Creep it up to 100%. This is 100% speed. This is speed mode 3, the fastest this little guy can go. Oh, that's the battery. So the battery has already given us the warning through the LEDs that the lights are flashing. I'll be honest with you folks, this has probably been one of the shortest flights that we've done this year. Let's take him from 100%, let's put him back to 30% speed. Let's try and see if we can squeeze a little bit more time out of that battery. Okay, let's see if we can bring him down. Look at this. Lights flashing really fast. In for a landing, straight away. No problem at all. Okay. So now I'm guessing that this is going to be totally out of battery. No. Lights are still flashing. Let's see if we can take him up again. Okay, so once again, now we're going to try and take him back up. The lights are flashing. Obviously letting us know the battery is very low. I'm not going to do any video recording. We're going to keep her on 30% speed. So let's put on everything. Let's see if we can take her up. Yes, we can. No, we can't. It died straight away. There we go. So that's it. The battery is totally out after a six minute flight. Let's get a verdict. So thoughts and impressions on the JJRC Blue Crab. Well, I'll be honest with you. It flew very well, right? Let's, let's do the positives first. So it flew well. It was silent in its flight. It handled really quite well. When altitude hold kicked in, yes, okay, it drifted, but obviously we do see drift with altitude hold. But the most imperative thing is that it doesn't fluctuate in its, uh, in its altitude or it doesn't decrease altitude. Uh, it didn't. It stayed at a same point. Also, we have the transmitter is easy to operate. Obviously, it is your own smartphone. It is used in the JJRC app. That in itself is really easy to navigate, really easy to use. When you wanted to carry it, the quadcopter folds down into a really nice package. A nice package enough for you to, to, for you to put away in your bag and not have to worry about it getting damaged as you go into your, your destination to fly it. Negative side is the battery life is far too short. The battery life is nowhere near um, 10 minutes. So we're looking at a six minute flight here today. 360 flips didn't work. Um, and I tried every single angle, I tried every single way to try and get them to flip and it just did not. Once you were up at a particular altitude, okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna level with everyone here for the second. It's very cold here today. The first day I think we're, we're almost in minus figures, almost. Um, now, when I got to a particular altitude, I was gonna say about eight, eight foot, and I tried to reduce the altitude even more of this quadcopter, it would not reduce. Now that, to me, it seems almost as if you need to be able to bring a quadcopter to land. There's no ifs or buts about it. If it's up in the air and it's flying, it eventually needs to come down. So that in itself did leave me a little bit cold at the fact that I couldn't bring it down past eight foot. Now, it's saving grace in saying that is the fact that when the battery lights flash, there's two different types of LED flash on this. There's one quite slow pulsing to let you know the battery is low, and then the LEDs flash really fast, really erratic, really fast. That's to let you know the battery is almost empty. When that happened, the quadcopter stopped and it just lowered itself, which I thought was excellent. I haven't seen a non-GPS quadcopter that's lowered itself as quickly, as abruptly, and not just flown off in some crazy angle. So I was really quite happy with that. 
but obviously as I say the main thing about this quadcopter is the battery life is so incredibly low now I recorded video for three minutes and we had a six minute flight so three minutes with video three minutes without video in my in my world that's not good enough but it is only a small quadcopter so that being said I wouldn't recommend this copter I think it's okay I think it's pretty good it's pretty fun but and it is it does come in at quite a nice cheap price point so if you are to buy it then you're not going to be paying that much for a quadcopter and that in, in itself is quite good but I wouldn't turn around and say that I'd recommend this all right then folks thanks ever so much for watching and listening I've been JD you've been fantastic as always if you haven't already please subscribe hello and welcome to all the new subscribers I hope you're enjoying the channel so until next time my friends Happy flying. folks JD here and today we've got this this is the JJRC Cygnus so before I go any further no doubt you can see the trees you can hear the wind we have got a storm encroaching on us um, and I thought I would get out as early as possible and fly this before the storm comes in properly and stops me from doing everything filming related uh, so I'm gonna try and see if we can take this guy up but I'm not too sure I obviously don't uh, condone and or do dangerous flights um, so we're gonna try and see how far we go if we can get to the end of the video then great if we can't then I'm gonna have to come back once this storm has passed but let's carry on anyway and see how far we get so as you can see this drone is a folding quadcopter the two uh, arms either side fo folded back on themselves for the time being uh, I will be unfolding them before the flight obviously now just to do that as we saw in the unboxing you have a little switch under here which will unlock them but you can just pull them out like that and that then will then lock um, the propeller arms in place ready for flight look at that this is such a big copter so as we can see on the front couple of features before we go any further we've got a camera on the front um, we this quadcopter does come with altitude hold uh, the transmitter as well does allow for FPV relay uh, obviously because you have Wi-Fi built into the camera therefore that streams back to the JJRC app on your phone uh, now let's just have a quick little look at the transmitter. I've got the transmitter fitted with my cam with my phone already. Uh, now this is properly secure. I don't have any issues with this whatsoever. There are a couple in the, in the corner here, left and right. There are a couple of squishy, uh, almost like foam plates that your cat that your phone sits into, and also. I don't know how well you can see this, but the transmitter there has got a lip on the edge. So even if those that foam was to move, the transmitter itself is uh, the phone isn't going to fall out because of these lips either side on the transmitter. Look at that. That's quite a size. That's amazing. All right. So here we are. So far, I've put the batteries in. We've turned on the transmitter. We've bound it to the quadcopter with a standard up and down of the left track um, analog stick there. Now, as we can see, the video is relaying, but I have got one word of warning. If um, inside here is a very inside the, the transmitter is, is a very tight compartment. Do not use any batteries like this. These batteries have a covering on them, almost like a waxy covering. Don't use these cover covers at all, um, as you won't be able to get them back out properly of the quadcopter. Something quite standard like that, standard little battery, then that will work quite well. All right, so let's give it a try. Okay, we're up, we're off, we're going. We're in speed mode three and she is quite powerful um, now obviously as you can see is a little bit jerky to begin with I am for the second combat in this wind I'm trying to see whether or not it's viable to fly in this this is speed mode 3 and she's not the quickest but she's powerful and that's exactly what we need this is what I think we've been missing from a couple of uh, quadcopters of late is the actual power when you when you crank up the power to speed mode 3 you need that power to be delivered and wow this thing does deliver it okay let's try the other speed modes so this is speed mode one she's still really good two beeps speed mode two and she dips forward a little bit more motors giving us a little bit more power speed mode three this is the ultimate this is as fast as it gets look at her go 
so far I think this wind is actually worse if you're a person <laughs> or if you're the trees in front it seems really strong but obviously it's not interfering with the flight that much so I'm going to try and see if I can keep on going so this does deliver quite a high amount of of power I had a comment that said that um, I think if memory serves the predecessor of this the motors were absolutely terrible um, and I was really hoping that this wasn't going to be the case with this one oh and it so isn't I mean as I'm sure you can you can see this is really really doing well so it's cutting through the breeze it's able to turn it turns on on a six pump so can it go without any issue whatsoever comes back and then if I turn it look at that and the motors aren't very loud either they're really quite quiet which is something I didn't expect from this normally with uh, the lighter quadcopters like this I am often a little bit wary because the motors themselves are often somewhat underpowered but not with this this is powered I think correctly for the weight because with this what you need is you need a quadcopter which is nice and light isn't too heavy to carry but that the slightest breeze like we've got here today isn't going to affect how it flies because trying to find especially in the UK the perfect day to fly is an absolute nightmare and to be honest with you you're never ever going to get one it's either dark it's either raining it's windy there's, there's always something that's going to stop you from flying so having a nice light quadcopter like this with powerful motors is exactly what you need look at that as well the LEDs are really bright so blue at the back green at the front I'm often a little bit wary of these sort of domed LED covers like this just because they often detract from the brightness of the LEDs but once again this is not happening they either have used extremely bright LEDs or they've doubled them up yeah this is very good I'm really quite happy with this I'm having so much fun with this sorry let's try and see if we can land it so there we go bang no problem lands without any issue here you can see the video relay so you can see the video itself it looks to be good quality we often get this we, look, we can only have a little look and see what the quality is like once we are um, once we, we're editing it but as you can see that looks really quite good and the refresh rate is really quite high okay let's take her back up again so what we're going to do in order to take her back up to land her we've got this little button here to take her off is this one so that's exactly what we're going to do so in three two one up she goes hello back into speed mode three cutting through the air I'm still recording video I want to see get as much video as possible from this guy so we can see exactly how uh, what the resolution is like what the refresh rate is like and see how well that camera works all right let's bring him back to me then and let's land him let's bring him down oh a little bit bumpy but it does it without any issue all right then folks let's get a verdict all right then folks so what do I think of this well I'm extremely surprised because from the feel of it it feels quite plasticky I didn't think there'd be a lot of um, I didn't think this would be up to the grade if I'm honest it just looks like it is which often means that it isn't but I, I, I'm obviously a little bit speechless I thought that it was going to be far underpowered than what it is now these motors these motors aren't anything special they're just standard quadcopter motors but I tell you what in speed mode 3 wow they cut through the wind about the propeller arms so as you can see there are four little buttons here you can just pull the buttons down and you can just fold the quadcopter arms in I love that I really love that uh, just because it now means you can take it in a much smaller bag as we're here let's turn that off having an off button underneath as well is great because often what you find is when you come down and if you crash you will land on the top and that often uh, does kill the button a little bit and does make it harder to turn it on and off uh, so the camera well we've recorded quite a bit of video and I'm eager to see how this camera holds up so obviously in the video I'll comment on that in the ticker underneath here uh, just to let you know exactly how how that camera reacted altitude hold works extremely well obviously today there's a little bit of feathering because we've got this this wind coming in so the pressure is altering so therefore uh, the quadcopter is moving oh look I've lost a little nodule 
I'll have to replace that when I get home. Um, now, obviously, as you can see from this, I did crash it. I crashed it once, and you can see I scuffed up. Uh, now, how I did that was quite simple. When the quadcopter came in and I was going to automatically land her, um, she hit the floor, she bounced, and then she flipped herself over. So pretty much she was coming down, and she bounced, and then she flipped herself over and scraped herself across the ground. Now, that is quite a harsh landing, because obviously all the impact is going on these little nodules here, but it's ricocheting back down into the motors. I had no problem with her afterwards being taken back off or flying. Obviously, if you crash in a lot harder way, then I can't recommend that it is going to work, but what I can say is from a light crash, this thing does hold up without any issue at all. What about the transmitter? Well, the transmitter, wow, okay. So, uh, it, this is brilliant, again, I love the fact that the, that the your FPV, ca that your, um, your phone sits inside the transmitter because often I feel that the FPV booms, sometimes they don't hold my phone exactly as I want them to this thing does and also when you're flying it oh my god the feeling is incredible it feels as if you're flying like a massive aeroplane or something <laughs> just because the sheer weight and the size of this transmitter as well as the fact that it is really quite chunky does mean that as you're flying um, you are getting a really great um, feeling from this now there are far too many buttons on this I think um, and I've only used the two of them or three of them speed up mode automatic landing and automatic takeoff now obviously all the other ones like you've got the trims either side you've got fine tuning where as well over here you've got the on and off button over here as well you've got feedy flips there are a lot of buttons to contend with but I didn't find it overly confusing or I didn't find it uh, too much of an effort to go through everything so I'm really happy with how the transmitter works as well and also transmitter range I mean obviously I always say that we get down to the bottom there that is quite a way away I don't know I will have to look at exactly how long that is I did measure it once but I've totally forgotten um, so I will have to have a little look and see how that goes but all in all this transmitter I'm really happy with so there we are folks thanks ever so much for watching and listening I've been JD you've been fantastic as always if you haven't already please subscribe hello and welcome to all the new subscribers I hope you're enjoying the channel so until next time my friends Happy flying! Hey folks, JD here, and today we are looking at this guy. This is the JJRC H97, or the SEMA X5C clone. It looks almost exactly the same in every way to the main body of the SEMA X5C. Uh, that was such a great little copter, I hope this one is going to be as good. Now, in order to fly these, these are extremely light copters. These are extremely light copters, so I've had to wait quite a while until there is practically no wind in order to fly this, just to ensure that it stays within the paddock and it doesn't get lifted off anywhere. So, so what I'm hoping to see out of this copter, I'm hoping that it's as nice to control as the SEMA X5C, but also a little bit more refined as well, so it's not so jerky in its movements, um, but it has got big shoes to fill if it is going to contend to the X5C, which has been around for a very long time. So, let's have a little look. We've got a little camera at the front. I've popped an SD card in there, see if we can get some video shots. Um, the landing sprigs didn't require any screwing in whatsoever. They just pop in themselves. They're held in by two little dowels. Uh, we've got green LEDs on the front and uh, blue LEDs on the back. Another way to denote the front is that the camera points towards the front and that these red uh, propellers are pointing towards the front as well. Such a nice little quadcopter, so what we'll do, we'll open her up, we'll pop the battery in, we'll plug the battery in, we'll turn her on, and then we'll take her up and see what she can do. So what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and plug this in first. Oh, well that's one thing straight away, look at that. Now that was set to off, but as soon as you plug the battery in, this button here pretty much doesn't do anything. Right, so in goes the battery. Let's mind those cables out of the way. This is quite a little fiddly operation, but it can be done. There we go. And then, and then that's it, you're in. Okay, so only once, this is quite interesting. So you all saw there that the lights were on as soon as I plugged the battery in. As soon as I closed the battery bay door, 
this switch now works. Right, okay, that's a little bit strange, not seen that before. Right, let's take her up there, folks. Okay, one thing to clear up beforehand. Um, now, I said these two buttons in the unboxing, I said they pretty much sometimes don't do anything with these particular controllers. These do. Uh, it takes photos if you just press once, and if you hold, it takes video uh, as well. And these are your return to home and your headless mode. So, there we go. One beep letting us know the transmitter is on, and then one beep again, and a solid LED just to let us know that we've bound to the quadcopter. So, let's take her up. Okay, straight away, very light, so light, <laughs> and the slightest movement on the, on the transmitter causes her to career towards the direction that you're pointing. Seems to fly well. We've just taken her around a little bit, just have a little look at her just to see if she's stable or if she needs any further calibration. She seems to be working okay. Okay, so that's the first little test. Let's bring her down. Let's bring her down. Now then, let's... I think it was push and hold. One beep. Now that should now be recording video. There's no LEDs on the camera. Okay, so let's give that a try. It did beep, it did register a response, so hopefully that response was that the video is now recording. So let's take her up. I did have a lot of trouble trying to get some solid FPV out of the SEMA X5, so I hope this is not going to be the same. Uh, it took me multiple flights in order to get any video whatsoever. First impressions though, extremely light, quite quiet. That's really quite nice. I don't like quadcopters that scream at you as soon as you take off. And even though this guy is a little bit, a little bit loud, He's a lot quieter than the ones I've been flying recently. Yes, this guy is pretty good. This guy is pretty good. I mean, he picks up really well, so you can get quite close to the floor, and then you can jam on the accelerator, or jam on the throttle, and that's it. He does take off. You can cut the motors out, and then they pick up quite... Yeah, this is, this is really quite nice. It's quite a gentle flight, it doesn't seem to be wanting to pull away every single direction that I turn or every single direction that I make with the transmitter it's following without any issues. This really does seem to be a great little copter. Lots of power. Now the only thing I want from this now is just to be recording some FPV. If this has got the FPV with it as well Sorry, if this has got the video that, I've, uh, that I'm recording from the camera with it as well, then that's it. I will be a happy little bunny. <laughs> I mean, the amount of power this thing has is, is just silly. These motors are really good. Look at that. So close to the floor, and then she just picks up without touching. Beautiful. Really nice. Okay, so let's take her up. Let's do a couple of little flips and see how she goes. So, let's take her up, let's fly her out, turn her around, bring her back to me, and then, flip number one. That's quite nice. Flip number two. Multi-directional flips. <laughs> oh. So all in all, really quite happy with this little guy. So, there we are. Let's bring her down. Let's take her in for a landing. And then, we'll take her in for a verdict. <laughs> so folks, yeah, really is a nice little copter. Very basic. Um, so very basic in its operation. No altitude hold, no mod cons. This really is as basic as it gets when it comes to quad, when it comes to uh, quadcopter flying. A uh, little camera on the front, just for recording those little uh, videos and uh, taking those little photos. Let's see if anything has recorded when I get back uh, and when I start editing this video. Hopefully we've got something on there. Um, the flight itself was, was very good, very stable. Um, it could turn around corners without there being any issues. Um, 3D stunts, yeah, they work. <laughs> they are, they are, that is as fun as it gets. Um, but all in all, what a great little copter. So there we are, folks. Thanks ever so much for watching and listening. I've been JD, you've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please subscribe. 
hello and thank you to all the new subscribers hope you're enjoying the channel so until next time my friends happy flying hey there, folks JD here and today we've got this look the JJRC Elfie this is the selfie qu uh, quadcopter so as you can see we're in a new location today I thought I'd bring us over to the woods uh, which isn't too far from my house uh, and obviously I think it's getting a bit samey going to the same place all the time so here we have it so I thought it would be a fantastic place to try this out as this quadcopter doesn't have to go too far away from you as it is the selfie quadcopter so therefore you'd have to keep it quite close to yourself as well so without further ado let's put this down and let's take her off Okay, so I found a nice flat area to take off from. Let's connect our application. Oh, look at that. Perfect. So now we've connected directly to the quadcopter. Let's enable altitude hold by clicking that button there. Clicking the up button starts the motors off. And then you can click upwards. And there she is. Okay, so here we are. She is up. She's running. And she's not very stable at all, look at her. Okay, so let me just see if I can get a hold of her for a second. She's very loud. Let's turn on the recording of some video there. Little fly past. She's not the quickest, but obviously for the second she is only on 30% um, speed. I don't want her on too quick as we are in unfamiliar territories so let's take her for a little spin so I've got the video recording as well now so now we should just be able to hold her there oh she does a little as with every non GPS uh, altitude hold quadcopter there's a little bit of movement from the altitude hold but to be honest that's okay I'm quite happy with that Okay, hello, let's take her straight past me. So here we have it, let's take her up a little bit higher perhaps. She is seeming to drop out, drop in altitude quite a bit. I'm also a little bit concerned of the fact that she's very loud. God, she's crazy loud. So I think for the most part, she is... She's, she's okay, she's alright. A lot of trim had to be used in order to make her quite stable. She was flying off to the left, so I had to use quite a lot of, of right hand trim. Um, but yeah, I think for the most part, she's okay. <laughs> There's so much downdraft coming off those, uh, off those propellers, it is unreal. Okay, so. Maybe, let's turn around a bit. Let's increase the speed to 30. Sorry, to 60. And still, even on 60%, she is still not very powerful. <laughs> but then, this is, let's be, let's be honest folks, this is meant to be purely a selfie drone and not a speed demon. So let's see now, if I take her back down to 30, need a bit of precision for this next little bit. Let's take her for a strut around the woods, so you guys can see where I'm filming as well, because this place is beautiful. So through we go. There's going to be a little bit of movement on my head camera, I do apologise, but that's just as I'm walking. Let's take her up a little bit as well. Look at this place, I love it down here. It is absolutely beautiful. I mean, don't adjust your lenses, folks. There is a lot of fog here today, as I'm sure you can see, which is adding a little bit of, uh, of mist. <laughs> uh, which is actually adding a little bit of atmosphere, rather. And, uh, okay, so we've got a bit of a clearing here. So let's take her up a little way. Let's try a flip. So, holding that button, and then directional. No, flips don't seem to work. Okay, let's bring her back to me a little bit. She's going off a little bit too crazy. <laughs> okay. P 
perfect. So let's bring her down for a little landing. Okay, lovely. Right. Perfect. So, first impressions. Well, a lot of trim needed to begin with to get it to fly quite stable. Um, very loud, very, very loud. Did not expect it to be as loud as she was. Uh, but remarkably easy to control from the smartphone. I mean, obviously, they are not very difficult to control, but you do find that some are easier than others. But it depends on the apps. Um, but yeah, this one. It's actually really good, really quite enjoying it for the second. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll change location, we'll go from here, that is where we came, we came from. Let's just nip down and I'll show you some of the waterfalls around about this area as well. And off we go, up she goes again. So, all in all, I quite like her, I quite like her. She takes a little bit to get to uh, control, there's a little bit of uh, trim needed, as I said, but altitude hold on the on the most, for the most part, seems to be really quite stable. So all in all, yeah, I'm very quite impressed with the way that she handles, the way that she works. Uh, a couple of little drawbacks, a couple of little little issues I found. I tried to make it flip a couple of times and that just did not work. It just sits there and uh, there doesn't seem to be any action from it whatsoever. Um, but, yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, for a drone that costs you, you know, as little as, as, as this, I think it cost me about £30 delivered to the house. So there we have it, folks. That was a bit of fun. So, uh, yeah, I mean, overall, I'm very happy. I think the quadcopter is definitely worth the money that you're going to spend for it. Between £30 and £50, as I said, I managed to get mine at Christmas time. So that did bring the price down quite a bit to around about £30 delivered. Um, a couple of positives is that it does have fold away wings which does make it very portable as you can see a um, couple of other downsides to it is that no matter how, what i tried i couldn't get it to flip um, so that just is one thing that one, one feature that isn't going to work uh, as far as it goes for a camera drone it's okay the camera resolution is all right um, and it is quite loud so if you are going to have it hovering above you and just looking at you then you may want to uh, if you're taking photos great if you're taking videos you may want to uh, just remove the uh, the sound uh, or the background noise from the video so there you have it so thanks ever so much for watching and listening folks i've been jd you've been fantastic as always this has been the jjrc elfie fold away selfie drone so if you've liked, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. That'll just ensure you get a gentle email um, every time a new video goes out. There are three videos a week. One on a Monday, one on a Wednesday and one on a Saturday. Uh, so there we are. So until next time, my friends, happy flying. folks JD here and today I bring you this this is the JJRC Elfie Plus and it is the updated version on the JJRC Elfie okay so one more thing just before we go any further um, this has been very kindly given to us by uh, RC Moments so thank you ever so much guys for supporting me and supporting uh, the channel don't forget to head over to our Facebook page, you'll find the link in the description uh, for all coupon codes as well as reviews, written reviews and more things as well. And if you could as well, if you wouldn't mind, just give us a like, that would mean a hell of a lot to me. Thank you folks ever so much. Uh, so, to carry on with this, what we've got is this little selfie quadcopter. Now, as we know, we looked at the Elfie a couple of months ago, about more than more or less about seven months ago, and it sort of left me feeling a little bit less than positive. Uh, just mainly because it is marketed as a selfie drone and yet it couldn't take selfies very well the camera was absolutely terrible its barometer was less than satisfactory so therefore instead of it holding a nice line in the air it was just waving all over the place so today I'm hoping this uh, upgraded LFE plus is going to give us a really good flight so just to go through some of the features we've got a camera on the front that has got a different uh, has got 
quite a few angles that can be used from right the way down looking underneath the drone to right the way in front. We have a white LED in the front there, red LED on the back. Obviously the, this drone is a folding drone so therefore as you saw at the start of the video I just popped out the uh, the propeller arms there. There's no latch or anything holding them closed so they can just open without any issue. Um, now the battery, this came with three batteries. I've charged up all three batteries uh, so hopefully we should be getting about six to seven minutes per battery approximately. So that should give us a really good flight time today. Okay so that's been the quadcopter. Let's have a little look at this transmitter. All right so that's the transmitter. This is as JJ JRC put it a gravity sensing transmitter meaning that when you have it in your hand that basically you control the rotational movements of the quadcopter using the analog stick but when you want to move the quadcopter you move your fist like this so pitch forward back left and right and it is it's a quite a strange little concept I'm looking forward to testing this out and to see how it goes but there is one major downfall with this transmitter and that is you cannot start the uh, the recording of a video or take uh, uh, selfies or take any pictures using this room this transmitter for that my friends you would have to switch over to the JJRC app on your phone which is something we're going to be doing a little bit later for the minute I'm going to give this a try and see how this goes now to, uh, when we start off we're just going to turn on the transmitter and bind to it with a standard up and down motion and then to take off we're just going to click this analog stick in once that will allow us to take off and then to, to land we should be able to just click that transmitter once again and the quadcopter should land. Alright well that's enough of my inane waffling let's get on with this let's take to the skies. Okay so to begin with let's knock on the Elfie. LEDs front and back knock on the transmitter Simple one up, one down, two beeps letting us know that the transmitter has bound. Not only that, but the LED here on the transmitter is solid and the LED on the quadcopters are both solid as well. So we should, we should be able to just click this button and then take off. All right, we're up. And I tell you what, right from the off, first thing I notice, oh my God, look at that. Now we've got a little three mile an hour breeze coming in here today. But this transmitter, I'm just holding my hand extremely still. I wish I could show you. I'm, well, I'm going to show you in a minute. I'm just trying to get a feel for this quadcopter. Now, one thing I noticed straight away is that it sounds a hell of a lot more beefy. These motors really do sound a lot more powerful than the previous incarnation of this drone. Okay, oh my God, this really works so well. I hate to call it, I've literally taken it off like 20 seconds, it's been in the air, and I've called it. <laughs> no way. Flabbergasted, right? Okay, so let me show you what I'm doing. So essentially, all I'm doing is I'm holding the drone in a particular area, obviously that barometer, keeping it at that particular altitude, and I'm just feathering my fist around a little bit. That's a sentence I never thought I'd say. And while I'm doing that, the drone is just keeping level. Now, if I can try and see if I can get my hand in on the picture as well. So if I point forward, it goes forward. If I point back, it comes back left and right. Look at this. And the quadcopter moves in that particular direction. Oh my God, I didn't expect it to be as smooth as this. I honestly thought it was going to be an absolute nightmare to control and that this just would not have any any sort of control about it but I tell you what it's amazing it is absolutely all I'm it is it, well it's left me speechless absolutely I feel totally in control of this um, and it's left my other hand totally free absolutely 100% free this transmitter is most definitely a win if you get any issues in calibrating this transmitter, well, if you get any issues at all and you want to recalibrate the transmitter, then it's quite simple. All you would do is a button on the transmitter that you push. Actually, it's this one right here. And when you push that, uh, obviously with the quadcopter on the floor, you don't want to do it with the quadcopter flying, it then just recalibrates everything for you quite nice and smoothly. So, what am I feeling out of this drone? Well, I'm feeling that I've got a lot of control over it. I'm feeling that its movements rather than just being in my hand in the form of a transmitter, it's in my hand and however small or, or however 
However small my movements are, the quadcopter reacts. However big my movements are, the quadcopter reacts. I do feel totally in control of this. And it's not even a, G uh, a GPS enabled, enabled quadcopter. I, I am, yeah, absolutely, ah, oh, I'm just gobsmacked. It's taken me a little bit of time to just get used to it, as with everything new. But I do feel absolutely 100% in control of this. Okay, let's try automatic landing. So automatic landing is the same as automatic takeoff. Just push the middle button here once, and it should. Got to keep the quadcopter steady with the transmitter. But look at that. It just lands without any issues at all. And then likewise for the automatic takeoff, just one click again, and then push up, and she's up. Obviously, when you do take off with this transmitter, just to let you know that you do have to keep your hand totally still and totally straight while it's taking off. Oh, that's the battery. One battery is down. All right, let me land this, and then I'll exchange these batteries, and then we'll take it up in a couple of seconds. I, yeah, absolutely, that trans, I think what, the only thing that could make that little transmitter a lot better is the fact that if it will allow recording of video and photos to be taken from it. Um, because I do think that with that transmitter, it is so, so impressive and it's so smooth that I do feel that not being able to take photos from it is a massive letdown. I do think that that is something that needs to needs to be incorporated into the transmitter. Hopefully on the third iteration of this quadcopter, maybe they'll do it. Um, but certainly, I am certainly so much more impressed with this than I ever was with the first Elfie. I mean, it's just cutting through the air. It really is. Let's give it 60% speed. The quadcopter dips in the front a little bit. But then up it goes. It just, it reacts so well, even to the, my smartphone. It's just reacting so, so well. It's flying so incredibly, incredibly well. I am, I am so taken with this. Okay. Okay, so we did have a little shower a couple of minutes ago, so I had to stop filming uh, and then take the quadcopter in to keep it nice and dry. Now it's stopped, so I'm going to take back up again. Uh, and this time I have got, I've gone back to the transmitter, as I really want to use this a little bit more than we did do it at the start. We've got some video recorded by my smart device. It does raise a couple of questions, and one of the questions that I do find myself asking, can we use this transmitter and still record with using our smartphone? So let's give that a try. So I'm still gonna, I'm gonna keep this bound, but what I'm also gonna do as well is I'm still connected to the Wi-Fi on my smart device. So I'm gonna open up my JJRC device here, and I should get video relay back on this. There we go, which we have. So now I'm gonna start recording but I'm still going to be using the transmitter as my, um, as my controller device. So, what I'm going to do is hopefully get some nice little bits of video. Let's bring it up a little bit. There we are. Get some nice little bits of video while still controlling with this beautiful gravity sensing uh, transmitter. At least it just means that we haven't got to, even if you do want to stick to this lovely transmitter and there are a hundred reasons why I think you should uh, <laughs> and you still want to record video don't let that put you off you can record video just by connecting your transmitter directly to the Wi-Fi of the of the drone and recording from there so we're on our second battery and now the lights are flashing so I'm gonna have to let me switch this out for the third battery and final battery and then I'll take it back up so around we go again. Oh, God, so nice and so easy to fly this. And it flies without any issue as well. Look at it go. And it sounds so nice. It's not loud. Okay, okay, if you have a comparison between this and the other Elfie, which I'm going to do, um, then you will find that, yes, it is a lot louder than the other one but it's a lot more powerful rather than it just being loud as i've said before i hate loud motors but if it is going to enable if it does mean that um the quadcopter itself is a lot more powerful then it's something that doesn't bother me when it does bother me is when it's extremely loud and the quadcopter is struggling to get through on high speed the tiniest little breeze oh let me just take it up a little bit i'm flying a little bit too close to uh, to the floor there in some uh, some places oh 
but yes. And what I like about it as well is you can counteract the slightest breeze when you do want to hover it in a particular area. So you want to hover it and you just want to counteract that breeze, you can do so. And it's so, so easy to do it. Okay, let's land it. Let's get a verdict. All right then, folks, so what do I think about this? Well, I think this is a vast improvement on the original Elfie. The original Elfie was only controlled via a, smart, uh, via a smart device and it felt clunky. It wasn't refined. It didn't work properly. The camera quality was absolutely abysmal, so it couldn't really, I don't think, it could be called a selfie quadcopter. Whereas this thing, I think, is getting a little bit closer to a selfie quadcopter in itself now. With this particular design, I find that the quadcopter itself is really quite robust. I find that when it, when you take off, it's nice and stable. Uh, as you're flying it through the air as well, you have great control turning left, right, pitching forward and backwards without any issue whatsoever. Uh, we have recorded quite a bit of video using this little camera just out in a standard straight out formation. So hopefully that quality will come out and actually be quite good and actually viewable. But the flight itself was really fun. Uh, it was really easy to control. Uh, the motors are a little bit louder, but obviously not deafeningly loud, but they're louder from a power perspective, which I have no problem in whatsoever. Uh, the batteries, now we had three batteries. We've been through all three batteries. They lasted roughly six to seven minutes a piece. Uh, so I would definitely go for about six and a half minutes. Now that in itself really does make me quite happy because normally, with anything, I think the I think the original uh, Elfie was about five minutes, which in itself was far too short. But this thing is quite nice, and obviously with those extra batteries, it does mean that you do get extended flight times. The LEDs, the red strip on the back and the re the white one on the front, is very easy to see. Uh, the transmitter range as well. Using the transmitter, I got down to the bottom of the fence line, and likewise using the smartphone, I got down to the bottom of the fence line without any issue. Um, Wi-Fi didn't give me any issue on the smart device. Recording videos was absolutely fine as usual. Uh, and again, the movement of the quadcopter on the smart device miraculously was incredible. I didn't once feel as if it was unsafe. I didn't have to think, oh, hang on, stop. What am I doing? Turn it around. It, it was just really, really, really nice. It all seemed very controlled. So there we are, folks. Thanks ever so much for watching and listening. I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends, happy flying. And today we are looking at these. So we've got the JJRC JJ1 and the JJRC JJ2. Now the JJ2 you can see quite simply, you can denote between the both of them. One of them is black and it has got the four dots going up the back of the quadcopter. So these are micro quadcopters and they're pretty cool because JJRC gives you two. <laughs> um, now. These are meant to be little speedsters, so these are meant to be really quick, really fast, uh, and they can dodge really easily as well. Now the whole point of having two of them is that inside the box you get a augmented reality game as well, you can play with these. Now that seems to be JJRC's big thing for the minute. The Blue Crab had it, these have it as well. Um, I think it's a great thing, I think it's a nice little bit of fun. So, what? features do you get with these? Right, let's start off with the JJ1. So the JJ1, as you can see, is a folding quadcopter. It's quite simple to unfold. Just pull out the propeller arms and that's what you get. A nice looking little quadcopter. Little LED on the front. There's no camera with these at all. LEDs as well are across the sides and the back of the um, of the motor housings as well. Charging port in the back as well as above the charging port. There's a tiny little switch that you have got to be careful when you turn on and off. It doesn't feel that safe to me, um, but that could just be because I have huge hands. Uh, <laughs> underneath you have a couple of air holes as well for, air, for aeration to ensure that the battery, which you can't get access at, uh, doesn't overheat. And also you've got little air holes as well inside those motor arms. Now these little quadcopters, these can do 3D flips uh, as well as oh, as well as they have multiple speed modes. Okay, so that's the quadcopter's done. Let's have a little look at the transmitter.
So, here's the transmitter. It's a little bit different to what we're used to from GJRC. Obviously, there's no FPV boom because there's no camera to relay back to your phone. There's no altitude hold either with this particular quadcopter. That's why you can't see this particular analog stick sticking in the middle like that. It feels really plasticky. Uh, it feels quite sturdy. I'm not worried about that, but it just feels a little bit too plasticky for me. Two shoulder buttons. One's for speed, the other one is for 3D flips, which we're going to be trying out as well. And that's it for the main, the main buttons. You've then got your your trim controls, headless mode, and a couple of other buttons as well running all around the outside of the analog sticks. Um, but that's it, the transmitter is really small, really compact. Uh, so I think with that, let's take them up. Okay, so here's the JJ1 going up first. And this does seem, over the two of them, it does seem to be the more powered of the quadcopters. Now it's very quiet and it does tend to, it sounds really good as well. It doesn't, it's not too loud, it's not too quiet. It's something that, okay, the LEDs are bright. Oh, yeah, the LEDs on the front are bright when the quadcopter is above you. When the quadcopter is up directly in front of you, it's very difficult to see the little LED. But look at that, two red LEDs at the back. Oh yes, this guy looks pretty good. Pretty easy to fly. Okay, so this is just your standard speed mode number one. I'm trying not to let it go too far away because I understand it's very difficult to see something so small on camera. Right, okay, so what I'm gonna try and do for the second is just increase this to speed mode two, give it a bit more welly. Speed mode two, oh wow. Yeah, that thing really dips and off it goes really quick and we've got speed mode 3 as well folks that is guaranteed to drain the battery and off it goes and it is very fast oh my god look how quick it is <laughs> and it controls remarkably well it turns without any issue at all oh god this thing is really good look at it flying for something so small okay let's go back to speed mode 1 I don't want to wreck the battery straight away couple of 3d flips as I'm quite close to the camera Let's bring him back around. Let's do a couple more 3D flips. Okay, looking good, looking stylish. Okay, first thing you've got to realize with this now, as there's no locking on the propeller arms, it is quite easy. When you come down, you kiss the floor. That's what, exactly what I call it. When you, you come down like that and you, you give the quadcopter a bit more power and it just kisses the floor and then bounces back up, the propeller arms do move. So if that does happen, you're going to have to double check and just ensure that they are all clipped out again because this just kissed the floor once and the propeller arm just kicked back in. So with that, yeah, everything's fine. Let's take her back up. Okay, so far I'm really taken with this uh, little guy, the JJ1. He is, uh, he's really quite sweet. He's very fast in speed mode 3, quite fast in speed mode 2. Speed mode 1 is more for cruising speed, but look how easy he does these 3D flips. He just doesn't care. He's just flying around and then just 3D flipping. No problem at all. All right, I tell you what, let's bring him down and let's take up the other one. And then if we've got enough battery left, we'll take them both up again at the end. So down we come. Thank you, mate. Okay, so now we've got the JJ2. I've just turned this little guy on using the little clip at the back, the little on button at the back, rather. Let's bind single one up, one down motion. LEDs will then stay solid. And then, ha <laughs> ha, we can take this up. Now, I wouldn't have said, I would have said these guys had equal power until I took them both up at the same time. Now, with this guy, he is, his body is a lot wider. He's got three LEDs to the front rather than just the one. He's got two red LEDs to the back, so that stays exactly the same with the JJ1. 3D flipping is good, but when he comes back down, you've got to make sure you're on that throttle because as he's a little bit wider, I'm guessing he's a little bit heavier. And he will come down a little bit harder, so you've got to just be ready to feather that throttle up a little bit. And this is speed mode two, and he is a lot quicker. A lot faster but I still think JJ1 is quicker I still think it's faster uh, speed mode 3 as you heard three beeps using the left shoulder button there and honestly I yeah there's a little bit of a difference I can see a noticeable difference between 2 and 3 but other than that there isn't really a lot going on with that um, 
I'm guessing because of the size difference. It was really noticeable with JJ1, JJ2 not so noticeable, but this guy is really flying well. That is one thing that I can say for this guy. Uh, he's flying remarkably well. And those three LEDs, wow, look how bright they are. They are insanely bright. Now, with these little guys as well, what you've got to remember is they can just dart off like with any uh, smaller copter. Now, these aren't nano, these are microcopters. Uh, so when they do dart off, they are going to dart off at quite a rate. <laughs> um, look at speed mode 3 again. Drop his altitude a little bit and then whack on the throttle. And again, yeah, speed mode 3, I don't know. I'm not getting a lot of... Uh, I'm not getting a lot of uh, a lot of feeling with that, to be honest. Speed mode two, you can see he doesn't he lowers himself slightly, um, and speed mode one he no lowers himself totally back down to f almost flying, totally flat. Again, motors are lovely and silent. This is one thing I am liking as technology improves. Motors are becoming a lot quieter. <laughs> I mean, he turns on a six punts without any problem at all. Flies back without any problem. Yeah, really good. Okay, back to speed mode one again. Couple more flips for entertainment value. There we go. I love 3D flips. Serves absolutely no purpose whatsoever in the world other than just for pure fun. And that's what I believe quadcoptering is all about. All right, so increase the speed mode two, get a little bit more speed here. Because speed mode one is most definitely slower than JJ2. Uh, sorry, than JJ1. And uh, do you know what? I think we'll put that to the test. Let's bring him down. Let's land him. And then we will take up both of them in unison. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to put JJ1 in front, JJ2 behind, staggered, so that we're not going to get any collisions mid-air. And all I'm going to do, it's not going to be um, spectacular, I don't think, but I'm just going to take her, take them both around a bit and just see how they react. If it's a little bit too risky, then I'll just bring them down. Um, but it's only going to be in speed mode one. Bind, buff, both bound, both solid. LED is solid on the transmitter. So up we go. <laughs> Look at these. Look at these, both turning at the same time, yes. JJ1 kissed the floor a little bit there. Oh, it's really difficult to keep them both up. I wonder if they can both flip at the same time. Let's try it, let's bring them back around to me. Yes, they can, look at them go. <laughs> oh, altitude climb. <laughs> okay, we've got battery low in JJ. JJ2 and batteries low in JJ1. In fact, JJ1 has just ceased to exist. Uh, so let's land JJ2 as well. That was a nice little test. <laughs> oh, that was a nice little bit of fun. All right then, folks, as I come and collect the carcasses, then uh, let's go and get a verdict on this pair. All right, so wow, what do I think of these guys? Well, I gotta be honest, folks, I love them. Uh, <laughs> they are just a pair of crazies, an absolute pair of crazies. Uh, pretty much you can fly them in unison, but it's extremely difficult. Uh, or you can fly them separately, which I believe is how JJRC imagined them. Uh, the whole point of, I think, when I watched their adverts they, uh, for these particular quadcopters, they said that you can double the battery life. So what they imagine is you take one up, fly it around, and then swap it when the battery dies for the other one. So you're getting about six to eight minutes of battery with, both, with uh, each of them. Uh, which obviously if you're looking at them the max amount of time so eight 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 minutes ish uh, So you're looking at 16 minutes for them both. Oh, but they're so good And they fly in unison as well, which I think is just is just well hilarious uh, And really good fun as well, but let's look at JJ one uh, a lot faster very fast speed mode one two and three noticeably noticeably very very quick um, now, one thing I did have with this that I didn't have with JJ2 is when it came down and it kissed the floor, it did move one of the propeller arms in a little bit like that. So you have got to make sure that you're keeping aware of the propeller arms at all times just to ensure that they are out and they are functioning. Uh, obviously, if they are in, if one is in, then you're not going to get the correct flying method from this particular quadcopter and it is going to be nothing but dangerous. Uh, so then just bring it down, stop it, click out the propeller arm and take it back up. Uh, so yeah, that is JJ2. 
GTRC1 a lot quicker, 3D flips no problem, flies around no problem uh, and honestly the micro drone is extremely easy to keep in the air. So what about JJ2? Well, JJ2 is a lovely bigger quadcopter, as you can see, a lot wider on the front. We just put them both together so you can see them. There we go, look at the difference. Um, now, flying with this once again, like the JJ1, was no problem. Um, now, this kissed the floor twice, I believe, and at those times, not once did the propeller arms come back in. Uh, but also, you can double check the propeller arms are nicely tight and screwed just before your flight, just by using these little screws here. Just give them a little, little, little touch just to ensure that they are in there nice and secure. Um, 3D flips, no problem. F speed mode 1, noticeably slower than JJ1. Speed mode 2, again slower than JJ1. Speed mode 3, it's faster speed mode, slower than JJ1. Uh, but it, it doesn't detract from it at all. It really, I don't think it does. I think it is just... It's nice to have two quadcopters by the same manufacturer in the same pack and one slightly differs. Uh, so you're getting a little bit of a different flying style, a little bit of a different, uh, different speed modes. And to be honest with you, I'm quite happy with that. And both of them together uh, well that's just brilliant um and yeah not i didn't have any cause for concern the transmit range is really far i did once uh take i think it was jj1 right the way down to the fence line uh and back up and that didn't have any issue whatsoever uh so yeah all together i highly recommend these guys if you want to check out more the link is below in the description so there we are folks thanks ever so much for watching and listening i've been jd you've been fantastic as always if you haven't already please subscribe hello and welcome to all the new subscribers i hope you're enjoying the channel so until next time my friends Happy flying.